Hello and welcome. My name is John and I will be your instructor for this general class training program. For this class you will need a copy of the Amateur Radio Relay League ARRL general class license manual the seventh edition which you can order from the ARRL over the internet. There are several good reasons to upgrade to the general class license. For instance, you get access to a lot more HF 3 through 30 megahertz operating bands and modes. As a general, you are much more likely to begin communicating internationally. The equipment and operating procedures are more complex and more flexible. With the general ticket comes greater responsibility for operating properly as a representative of the United States. Other hams will also be looking up to you to set a proper example. This chart, which you will find in your license manual, illustrates the far greater operating frequencies available to you as a general class. For instance, as a general, you will have access to all of the HF bands. On the 10 meter band, the whole band will be open to you. Most of the 15 meter band will be open to you as well. The same is true for 40 meters and for 80 meters and several other bands including 20 meters which is famous for DX distance stations. Of the more than 302 of approximately 350 call zones that I have confirmed so far around the world, the majority have been on 20 meters. There are only 35 questions on the general class exam and Morris code is no longer required. One approach is simply to memorize all the right answers, but we would prefer that you understand the material. As a licensee, you are responsible to prevent unauthorized use of your equipment. You must provide some personal information, such as your current mailing address, and you must make your station available to the FCC for inspection upon request. The way that this class works is that you are expected to read the material in advance. We do not have time to address every topic in class, but we will cover the high points. In addition to the ARRL General Class License Manual, you will also need a copy of the Exam Win software for generating practice exams. That comes with the General Class License Manual. You'll also need a scientific calculator that you know how to use and that will do square roots, addition, subtraction, and logs to the base 10. Other than that, you will need $14 cash at the time that you take the actual exam. Let's take a look at procedures and practices. There are some terms that we need to define. A mode is a means to convey information, like single sideband or Morse code. Modulation is the process of putting that information on the RF carrier. The RF carrier is the radio signal that we are sending from the transmitter on one end to the receiver on the other end. Bandwidth is how much spectrum we are using. Here are some examples of voice procedures when operating on the HF bands. If I were calling CQ, I would say CQ, 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 this is AI6A calling. AI6A is my ham call. Or if I was calling for a DX station, I might say CQDX, 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 this is AI6A. 
Or if I'm calling CQ in a contest, I might say CQ contest, CQ contest, this is AI6A. That phrase CQ contest tells other folks on the band that I'm primarily interested in talking to those that are participating in the contest. Another call that we've used here lately is CQ Texas QSO party. If I were calling my friend Hal in California, I might say N6HAL, N6HAL, this is AI6A calling. And his reply could well be AI6A, this is N6HAL. Thanks for the call. You are 5x5 five five here in Inyakern, California, and my name is Hal. Hal. Please notice that this is a relaxed, easygoing, conversational s style. The term VOX stands for Voice Operated Relay, and it's for hands-free operation. Personally, I prefer a foot switch or a push-to-talk switch on the microphone. But for busy folks like those that are running an on-the-air net, Vox can be very handy. None of us own a particular frequency. We all share the radio spectrum. Here is the band plan for 20 meters. If we operate this way, we avoid a lot of hassles. This band plan is voluntary. While we are defining terms, here are some forms of voice communication. There's AM, amplitude modulation, SSB, single sideband, FM, frequency modulation, and PM, phase modulation. With AM, we vary the amplitude of the RF carrier according to the voice waveform. Here is an example of an AM carrier. We start with an RF carrier and a voice signal, and we end up with the voice signal imprinted on the RF carrier. The actual AM signal consists of an RF carrier and two sidebands. The two sidebands are mirror images of each other. For single sideband, one of the sidebands and the carrier have been removed. Here is what the spectrum of a single sideband signal looks like. Notice that the carrier is missing as well as the other sideband. This results in all the power being applied to the one remaining sideband. By the way, the missing sideband must be recreated by the single sideband receiver on the receiving end. In FM, the RF frequency is varied by the voice or data waveform. Here you can see the RF waveform changing according to the voice signal. With FM, the transmitter and the FM receiver must both be set to the same amount of frequency deviation. By the way, there is a core of volunteers who monitor the ham bands for violations. It is far better to hear from one of them than from the FCC. There are quite a number of data modes and techniques in use. They all use one state for the on condition and another state for the off condition. In addition, there are a growing number of digital techniques including traditional CW and radio teletype. The digital modes are particularly useful during emergencies because they are like an email message in that they can be printed.